The Wall Street snapped its four-week gaining streak. All sectoral indices post losses. On this week's edition of Editor's Roundtable, we put the spotlight on the $2.2 billion worth of block deals. In June, we ask whether or not HDFC Bank is set to waltz. And the big opportunity in India's electronic manufacturing services sector, we'll be highlighting that as well. I'm Marshall D'Souza and joining me on the show today, Prashant as well as Namesh. Hi guys, and we're joined by Mihir Bora as well. Mihir, thanks so much for coming down uh, to the studio. Well guys, what a week it was, right? We were happy about the four-week winning streak. Yeah. But we couldn't make it five. We couldn't make it five, and the and the worst part is that we just missed out the all-time high yeah. by some five points or something. By one point. One point. One point. One point. We planned for every day, right? Yeah. The guest with the, with the <laughs> graphics and everything. Absolutely. And it's still and it's still elusive. So I guess that was a bit of a disappointing. You know, thing. it'll happen when we don't plan. When we don't plan, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think. That, that's that's <laughs> the market, right? I, I think uh, good things, but uh, they take their time. So maybe yeah, the market maybe. wants us to wait. And all through the week, you know, I thought I was going to be the good luck charm. I came back from leave, and I was like, <laughs> today we're going. Then we went within one point. I was like, damn. <laughs> and I could have taken some part of the credit, but Mihir, how do you how do you think uh, you see things shaping up? You know, the markets they were on steroids actually. So some bit of consolidation or a pullback actually could be healthy. Mid and small cap stocks were just flying out. How far away away from that euphoric stage? Do you think it's getting a little bit frotty at certain parts of the market now? Uh, certain parts of the market definitely, I would say, uh, as you rightly mentioned. Mid caps and small caps is one space space I would be a bit wary about, mm -hmm. uh, but large caps still uh, offer decent value. Uh, the big reason is that we have not seen the index cross the high saw seen about say 15 months ago, right? Yeah. So uh, to that extent, we've seen earnings of the Nifty, for example, grow by a, almost 18 percent in the last 15 months. Yeah. So index being at the same level means that it's cheaper by 18 percent. So large cap uh, like indices like the Nifty are still not that expensive. They're trading at average valuations, mm -hmm. and if you look at some of the specific stocks, for example, three or four of the large banks, for example, they're still trading at price to book value valuations which are less than pre-COVID, and these are really large banks we are talking about, right? So there is, you know, enough scope for uh, scope for stock picking, and I think the the Goldilocks that we uh, are in, as far as India is concerned, where the peak of global interest rate uh, hike are probably past us. Even in India, RBI is not as hawkish as it was uh, three, three months ago. Inflation, WPI, etc., coming down, which means that we are in for an easing situation. And if uh, domestic demand kicks in, mm. I think it should be a good scenario for India. You know, me, you've given me a good base or a good platform because later on in the show, I'm going to be talking about one of those banks that are still at a valuation that is lower than what it was during COVID. So, you know, so we'll talk about them just a bit. But, gentlemen, what about you all? What do you all, uh, uh, who's taking the trade setup today? I mean, uh, Nigel, you talk about the Nifty, right? We yeah. couldn't make it to the fifth week, but I think the action was small caps and uh, mid caps because yeah. uh, small caps and mid caps gained for the 12th week and we could not make it to the 13th because, I mean, after 12 straight weeks of yeah. gains, uh, the index actually came under some pressure. And here is an interesting bit of statistic as well. And this is, I mean, I, I picked up some insp inspiration from an IFL uh, analyst and, uh, I mean, is a friend as well. So I basically looked at BSC, all BSE uh, stocks, uh, shortened that list by uh, looking at companies which have market cap of at least a thousand crores. Mm -hmm. uh, right. So there are a thousand and five such companies. I mean, actually, uh, that statistic itself is quite incredible. That there are only thousand and five companies out of all the listed companies in the BSC uh, which have a market cap of over thousand crores. And then I looked at uh, in within this uh, list companies which made a profit. I mean, any profit, yeah. uh, because I wanted to get to the P.E. ratio, 206, 251 stocks out of this 1,005 stocks on the BSE have a P.E. ratio as of today okay. uh, of more than 50 times, 50 times price to earnings uh, ratio. So I think, uh, you know, that kind of tells you, uh, by the way, I went back and looked at what this number was for the same group of stocks back on 31st of March. That was the low and from when the rally started. Uh, it was about uh, 15 odd percent, had about uh, had a 50, had a P ratio of over 50 times. So I think, you know, it just kind of goes to uh, uh, make the point once again that it's been an incredible rally. Uh, 63 stocks have a P ratio of over 100. I mean, these are not small numbers uh, by any yardstick. Now, just to come back to the Nifty itself. So, uh, you know, as I said, uh, for the mid-cap and small-cap indices, it's been the first pullback after 12 weeks of gains. The Nifty uh, on Friday has closed exactly at the 20-day moving average. And that is an important level uh, if you are uh, trading in the near term from a position, positional point of view. We were highlighting that number over Thursday and Friday, 18.660. And we, I think, managed a small close above it, just a couple of points or so. 
Uh, so it's neither here nor there. So you need a decisive move, and I think uh, so we come back and look at it, what the market does on Monday and Tuesday before the way holiday on Wednesday. Uh, just one point on global markets. Rally in India has been very broad-based, and I think that's a great thing. In the U.S., it has been extremely narrow. It has been basically all these six, seven AI stocks which have done very well. Not AI stocks, but stocks which have rallied on the back of the fact that AI is going to take, uh, you know, uh, take uh, eat everyone's lunch. Uh, so the point I'm trying to make is it's a very narrow rally in the U.S. and the view on Nasdaq is very divided. Some say, well, it's going to go all the way, uh, make new highs. Others say that it's ripe for a correction. The only question that is relevant for us is, will if Nasdaq starts to correct, will it coincide with the correction here as well, as many believe uh, one is due here in India as well? And I think we'll get the answers over the next couple of days or so. But on the Nifty itself, it's been a crucial close around the 20-day uh, moving average. Uh, Meera, I just want to sort of ask you, are you in the camp which believes that maybe time for a, you know, not a large pullback, but a decent pullback, which will give entry opportunities once again? Uh, certainly, pullback or a time correction, whichever way you yeah. look at it. Uh, yeah. Because as you mentioned, you know, a streak of 12 weeks is, is quite uh, quite a lot. And I, I always get scared when there is a, you know, continuous streak without any mm. uh, volatility, so to say. Mm. Uh, because if the market's too, uh, too steady and too trending, then you see this uh, retail euphoria jump in, you know, mm. uh, in a big way. And I think probably that's what we've seen in the small caps in the last few days. Uh, that coupled with, you know, the supply that you were talking about uh, makes it a little bit of a cautious situation, I would Somebody say. Somebody was joking <laughs> that, uh, on, uh, some, sorry, sent a mail on, I think it was Saturday or Sunday, he said that, oh no, it's this holiday. How will the 1% daily compounding happen? <laughs> <laughs> it will become that kind of predictable, yeah, absolutely. right? Especially so, in the small caps. Especially the small yeah, caps. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> Dimesh, uh, you, you're the blocks man, right? I mean, it's been raining yeah, blocks. This, <laughs> this whole week was all about blocks, right? Yeah. Every day, at least two or three blocks have yeah. got launched, right, from Monday till, even till Friday. Like, even yesterday, we saw a launch of Landmark. So it, 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 that was a week of, 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 of all blocks, right? But again, as we said, we just missed out on, on hitting an all-time high by just one point. Uh, the, all the indices have corrected close to one out percent. So again, a bit of a pullback from, from, the, from the euphoria that we spoke about. But as me spoke about, you know, euphoria in the, by the retail investors, I believe there is euphoria from the larger institutions. The kind of participation we saw in all the block deals, it was like just unseen of, I mean, we've not seen this kind of frenzy in the last many, 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 many months now. Uh, I was I was talking to some large HNI investors as well, uh, and and even they seem to be a bit worried. The way you know the, the blocks are getting launched, 10 10 percent equities getting changed hands. I'll go to the wall and explain in details about those blocks as well. But that that was a bit of a niggling worry for a lot of HNI investors as well. I guess uh, from a from a uh, you know momentum point of view, we saw some bit of defensive back in the market. So pharma did well this week. End of the week, we saw some uh, big moves in pharma names, and insurance was a big sector which came back very strongly. Some, you know, buying interest was back. We, we, we spoke to HDFC Life and she was quite confident about FY24 overall. So, insurance came back, pharma came back, but I think uh, the big, big uh, talking point or the big theme for this week was all about blocks. So, let me just go to the wall and explain what will happen in the month of June. The number itself will surprise a lot of, uh, lot of people. In the month of June itself, you know, in the first 20 days, so to speak, the June is not even over and we've seen block deals worth $2.2 billion. That's the amount of uh, stake which have been sold uh, in block deals by the larger institutions. I'll start with the bigger names first. So only yesterday, uh, you know, uh, which we, today morning that we saw, that was landmark. The private equity sold 10% equity. Some big market names from the, uh, from the domestic mutual fund side have bought. So that is one large block done and done. Uh, the other large big deals of this week uh, includes the names like, uh, you know, Pir uh, Piramal Enterprise sold its entire 8.3% stake in, in Shiram Finance. That was a large block. Sansera saw a large block deal wherein private equity sold 14% stake in a single day and that got easily sold into. Even for, uh, for a platform company like Delivery, Carlyle has a saw a clean out trade where Carlyle sold its entire stake worth 600 crores and they have moved out. But the big deal of the, of, of the month of June was definitely HDFC Ames. That was one of the large deals where Abedin has sold that entire 10% stake. And surprisingly, SBI Mutual Fund, a rival um, you know, entity, so to speak, they picked up a large chunk and they were anchor investors in, the, in that block deal. The big, other big surprising deal was Timken India. Even in this euphoria, a parent entity, uh, Timken, sold out 8% of, the, of their stake and they raised a lot of money in, in, in Timken India as well. Kim's was another stock, like, you know, something like CMS Info, private equity investors sold out 10%. Go Fashion, the Go Fashion block was launched on a Sunday evening and Monday morning before the market opened, it got cleaned out as well. So 
These were the few large deals. I'll just mention about the BSC CDSL deal as well, where BSC sold out for four and a half percent stake. That, to some extent, was largely because of regulatory issues. But otherwise, it was largely the PE exits, larger funds selling out, and you know, getting getting easily absorbed by domestic mutual funds and some large sovereign funds as well. So, uh, I, Mir is with us. Mir, I think Mir, you participated in one of the blocks as well. Uh, what is your sense? You know, you've, you've seen a two decade of of markets, is it, are you getting a sign that this is euphoria now? This is getting to a different level, and one should be cautious. Uh, euphoria is there in the in the in the mid cap and small cap space for sure. Not so much in the large cap space, and some of the blocks are actually in the large caps. But if you look at the if you look at the bigger picture, you know a lot of these blocks, uh, not all, but a lot of these are from companies which IPO'd one and a half yeah. two years ago. And now the original P investors lock-in periods have come to an end, and they have a choice of uh, getting out. So if you remember, in the IPOs, most of the the new tech IPOs, so yeah. to say, there was very little domestic institution participation. At that time, the concern was valuations. And so the IPOs did not see much of a response from the domestic institutions. It was retail and HNIs who participated. But after that, a lot of these stocks have corrected 50, 70 percent, and you actually saw even in the secondary market some institutions start building up positions. So. I think the difference is valuations and some of these have come to attractive valuations and anyway PE or VC funds want to get out. So I think it's it's a healthy situation where there is supply, there is demand. Uh, mutual funds and domestic institutions are sitting on cash. They anyway get uh, 2 to 3 billion dollars of SIP flows every every month. So sure. these 2 billion dollars that you talk about it probably a month of SIP flows, you know. So it's. It's, it's big, but not so big in the scheme of things. But, uh, you know, Meer, I want to ask you, Nimesh is asking me about the past week or coming week. <laughs> <What's> <laughs> I think it's continuing. Not only the secondary blocks, but even uh, the anchor IPO allocations for IPOs. Allocations yeah. IPO. A lot of the smaller companies are still you know, looking for anchor allocations. <coughs> you know, we talk about blocks all the time. For viewers, how does it happen? I mean, you get a call and you say, do you want to, we have this much. It typically happens post-market yeah. uh, to be executed the next day. Hmm. No, I mean, uh, you, so you express your interest, I want these many shares and they market for you. I mean, what I just, you know, it, it's fascinating. I mean, right? Uh, and and these are large amounts of stock which are sold together. So, so typically, you know, the 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 fact that the blocks are there would be known for a few days because yeah. everybody knows who the PE holders are. Everybody knows who the funds That's are. That's how I get to know. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and Nimish, Nimish also keeps talking about it on TV. Uh, and and broadly, uh, since we cover about uh, 200 to 250 stocks, right. we do have a view on some of the yeah. stocks in any case. But right. so uh, in, we, we in, can take a decision at uh, uh, at short notice. Yeah. But Meer, in the last few instances, most of the blocks have happened in the block window. Is that something which which is which is a good sign that you know there is no leakage? Uh, it's for a dedicated buyer and a dedicated seller, and not at a large discount as well. Is that been one of the reasons that you participated in few of the blocks? Certainly, block window is always more efficient because then you, the buyer and seller have control over the over the you know sure. allocations etc. So that's always more preferable. Of course, in the in the open market, you have the flexibility of probably getting a mo little more discount. But then you know it's in the market you can uh, end up mm. not getting your quantities because you know mm. market so liquid. So Mir, I'll I'll ask you about uh, your preference for NBFCs. But before that, let, let's go to Nigel because he's put out a nice piece on uh, whether this is going to be a time for HDFC HDFC bank merger to get in place and whether HDFC Bank can really outperform. So, Nigel, give the numbers. You know, gentlemen, we're talking about the music playing and everyone dancing. But yeah. you have to be careful, right? And you have to stand near the door in case the party ends, right? So, in that point of time, we're looking for some safety, good quality and well-run management. So, that brings me to the point. Is it time for the HDFC twins to waltz? You know, because they're going to be one in the coming uh, weeks or the coming month or so. So, are they set to do a bit of a dance and participate in this uh, party? Well, if you look at it in the last three months, on the last three years, you'll see that HDFC Bank actually has been a relative underperformer in comparison to the headline index and some of their peers uh, as well. Now, in July 2023, we'll be getting the record date and we'll get, you know, both these two entities that will come together. And the merger ratio as well has already been announced. The Nifty Bulls, in fact, will be hoping, hopefully, they're going to waltz and going to be participating in this party or hopefully even leading this party. Because in the merged entity, they'll have nearly around 14.5 to around 15% of the index and you'll have to that will have to perform to take the index higher or at least hold on to the index you can't have a longer period of underperformance but in the near term there could be a couple of technical factors that could be weighing on the stock one is a sebi rule that a mutual fund scheme cannot invest more than 10 percent in a single security so in the near term that could be a bit of a headwind the most on the street believe there will not be such a large overhang on that front the other problem was the street was baking and there's going to be an increase in the weightage in the msci reject but that didn't happen as well, and that was a bit of a disappointment. But those are more technical factors. 
fundamentally, the bank is looking rock solid. And let's break it up for you in three big points. They have stakes in you know, HDFC Life as well as HDFC A AMC as well as HDB uh, Fins. You know, that value could be anything between 190 to 220 rupees per share. Various analysts have given some uh, uh, you know, numbers out there. But out of the total share price, you'll see around 12 to 15 percent approximately is accounted for uh, via these entities itself. So stripped of that, well, it's trading at close to around 14, 13 and a half to around 14 times on a FY25 basis. Remember, five-year average is close to around 20. So you're getting it at a bit of a discount. Even on a price to book value, well, it's trading at a discount in comparison to its five-year average. So that as well, on this front, is looking relatively OK. And the return ratios are fairly good. The ROA and ROE is as well quite healthy for the bank of this size. This is the broad number that most on the street are working with. Well, finally, if you're convinced that you know this is the way to play it and you believe that HDFC, the merged entity, will look up, well, then maybe HDFC Limited will get preference in comparison to HDFC Bank because ultimately, you're going to be getting the merge HDFC Bank entity. And as of now, there is a, a, a bit of a cushion with HDFC Limited to the tune of close around 1.7%. The big question is, is it time for them to join the party and is the waltz on the cards? Well, me, let me post that question to you itself. At the start of the show, we were talking about a couple of those entities that are trading still not at the pre-COVID uh, period. And this is one of them, I think. So, what's your view? Is it time for it to waltz? Well, I can't comment on individual stocks for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, as you said, there are uh, only a few uh, large cap uh, stocks which are trading at bank stocks, for example, which are trading at below pre-COVID valuations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that's the reason as I was mentioning. You know, there is some buffer for the Nifty to you know, uh, go up in terms of valuations because of these kind of uh, structural factors. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> let's just take a break, Nimesh. We'll come back uh, on the other side. Uh, and we have one more very interesting piece that we'll put out, uh, the electronics manufacturing services opportunity. And, you know, we talk about stocks like Dixon, Amber, Silma, Keynes, and what they've done April to June. I mean, massive rallies, but what's the play there? Nimesh will highlight that for us. Mir, of course, stays on. We're back in just two.